One of the questions I get the most is, how did you just search YouTube or Google Images or whatever else? Because I have one search bar and I search a lot of different things with it. The answer's always been DuckDuckGo. There's a really cool feature on DuckDuckGo called Bangs, where I can type in what I want to search, do exclamation point, something like that, and tell it where to go. Exclamation point GI is Google Images. So when I hit enter, it will eventually <laughs> refresh. Cool, Google Images. Pretty entertaining. It did that there though, because it shows the problem I have with DuckDuckGo. I love this syntax. This is called bangs and bangs are awesome. They let you have one search bar and really simply with easiest syntax ever, search anything. I can do exclamation point YT for YouTube. And now it searched YouTube. I can do exclamation point GH for GitHub. You can put all sorts of different things there and it's super convenient. It's how I've done search forever. But sadly, my experience with DuckDuckGo hasn't been great. They called this out. Come on. I'm so mad at DuckDuckGo right now. Going to move off of DuckDuckGo first thing after stream. I am so fucking pissed. They're also DuckDuckGo. Fuck you, DuckDuckGo. <sighs> I know I was kind of joking when I said it's time to make my own search engine, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I did it. And today I'm introducing Unduck because I'm tired of getting ducked by DuckDuckGo. Unduck is free and open source, but I still have a team to pay. So let's hear from today's sponsor quick and then we'll dive into what I built and why. I'm really excited about today's sponsor because it's a product I've used and loved for over four years now. That product is Agora, and I firmly believe they're the best way to add audio and video to your app, especially if you're doing live communication. If you're building a Zoom clone, adding voice chat to your app, or maybe you just want people to be able to stream their voice over to something like OpenAI's Whisper Model. They're the best way to do all of this and everything in between. I know this for a fact because I've been shipping them for five years almost now on Ping. I tried every other provider, all the crazy WebRTC solutions, even rolling my own, and the quality I was getting was not even close to comparable to what Agora does. And their latency somehow even lower. None of the weird peer-to-peer -peer crap. It's actual high quality, reliable video infrastructure with latency that doesn't make sense at resolutions I didn't know were possible via these modern web technologies. It is really, really good. I've loved them for a long time. And if you're trying to build that in, go give it a shot. They even overhauled their entire React SDK based on my feedback. I had to roll a lot of that myself back in the day. It's cool to see it's in such a good state. I can't now mention the AI bit quick. They just shipped conversational AI, which is an integration to let their super powerful real-time network and SDKs work alongside the open AI real-time models. So you can do live transcription, live voice generation, and so much more. You can have a conversation with an AI on the other side live, just like you're in a Zoom call. If you're trying to build something like that yourself, I don't think there's any other place that will provide all the missing pieces anywhere near as well as Agora will. Check them out today at swaydev.link slash Agora and make sure to tell them that Theo sent you. <sighs> I can't believe I made a search engine. I don't think it's really a search engine. I've been calling it search engine in quotes or not a search engine in all the places I can when I talk about it. But the goal of Unduck is to give you the power of bangs without having to deal with DuckDuckGo's DNS being garbage because it is garbage. It just fails to resolve half the time. I'm honestly hopeful that I'm effectively just gonna bully them into fixing it because I'm not the only one with this problem. I've seen so many people using DuckDuckGo like me, trying a search and having it just hang there, sometimes for like 20 to 40 seconds. And the reason is because it's searching on their server. It's not doing a literal search, but the search is going to their server, being parsed, and then the URL is transformed to a different search engine if you used a bang. And there's no reason that that should be on the server. <laughs> I just want the search to happen immediately. And if I do corgis, exclamation point GI, I'm pressing enter now, it's already searched. No speed up, nothing there. Versus going to the DuckDuckGo site. So the DNS is pre-cached. It's warmed by the way, corgis. It's faster now because I already did the search, but it's a 50-50 shot. And as you saw from that highlight reel and from the start of the video, that wasn't faked. That's just my experience using DuckDuckGo half the time. And I was going mad. DuckDuckGo has been my default search engine on everything for like eight years now. Not because of the privacy thing. The privacy thing is nice. Just because I liked the ability to search anything so easily. And I'm not new to this space. 
I built the Chrome extension a while back that I should probably take credit for more often. People are always surprised. Chrome Tana. Because I was so mad that Windows 10 would only ever search Bing that I made an extension to redirect your Bing searches to your search engine of choice. The main reason I made this is I wanted to be able to use Bangs from the Windows search bar. I wanted to type something in there, exclamation point YT, enter, and have it open my browser on YouTube. Microsoft's response to this was to make it so Chrome can never open from Windows search. They forced a default in Windows as a response to me and obviously others at the time building tools like this to work around their forcing of Bing into Windows. I built this like I think it's been over 10 years since I released this, which is kind of wild. Worst thing I ever did, Chrome Tana got my fucking Google account fished so many times. To this day, I still get spam and fake purchase requests from people who want to like purchase Chrome Tana for me so they could spam a bunch of people with it. Microsoft tried to get it taken down so many times with bullshit copyright claims. I had to change the logo three times to get them to shut up. The rating happened because one of those phishing attempts failed, but despite failing, despite me having Tufa, they somehow managed to use a different loophole to break through, get into my Google account, and post malware as a Chrome Tana update. So that's the reason that it has the bad rating. Yeah, good times. I sh wish I never published this, honestly. It helped kickstart my career a little bit, but what I've gotten in return is a lot of bullshit, not success. Hopefully Unduck goes a little bit better. <laughs> All of this is motivated by my love of bangs. I really like the pattern. The fact that there are 13,500 of them, I use like 20 of them. The fact that there are so many of them is actually really cool. What's even cooler is if we take this URL, bangs, change it to bang.js, here they all are, is a malformatted JS file. It's called JS. It's some weird hybrid of JS and JSON where it is just an array that's never assigned a value. <sighs> so Unduck currently solves this by copy pasting it, making it bangs equals, and then prettier formatting it so I don't go literally mad. It's quite a file. 120 something thousand lines. Gzipped is down to like 400 kilobytes of JS though, which is nice. And I added one on top here for T3. We'll get to that in a second. Then I have the world's most complex vanilla JS code. Oh, here's the UI, by the way, if you were curious. The UI is me setting inner HTML if I call my no search default page render, which is what gets called if you don't have a query param in the search. So I just grab the queue, which is the query param. If I don't, you don't have one, you're on the home page. I render the home page. If you do, then I match to try and find a bang. If I find it, cool, I use it. If I don't, I use the default. The default is either coming from local storage, if you pass it through local storage. Yes, you can set it as local storage with default bang. And if you don't, I just use G, which is Google. I did that because I almost always did exclamation point G, because Google's still my favorite overall results. Now the default will just be that instead. And you can change it by just changing default bang and local storage. We're gonna expose it as a URL or something probably in the future. Maybe even make a UI for it, God forbid. As you see, we put a lot of work into the UI here. <laughs> You might have also noticed our dependency graph is nuts. I have so many depths here. So many dependencies. The only actual dev I have is the PWA plugin. I think it needs to be a real dev. I don't know if it has to, it can be a dev dep or not. I didn't really play with it to figure that out. I think it can just be dev, not positive. The reason I added that is it allows us to have a much nicer network tab. So I hop here and look at the network tab. This gets served by the web worker because the point of having a PWA is that you have a service worker that can resolve content without having the internet on. So here you see the HTML page came from the service worker. Nothing had to be fetched from the network to load this, which means when I do my searches, nothing has to be loaded. It's just evaluating a tiny JS file cached on your computer. That's it. No network calls, no tracking, none of that bullshit. I do have anonymous tracking with plausible on here. Very easy to disable if you want to. I didn't even do a custom URL for it. Probably disabled by default if you have an ad blocker. Just because I was curious how people are going to the site. That's it though. I didn't want to build a real search engine. I don't want to try and make my own revolutionary search product. I just wanted bangs to stop being so ducking slow. And I did it. This was a very fun, informative build for me. It showed me a couple things I found interesting. First and foremost, 
building quick solutions to problems you have has never been easier. The combination of the tools we have, the platforms we have for hosting things, and most importantly, the AI stuff that we build with has made it so easy to take the thing you like from something and go make a better thing with it. Since DuckDuckGo is like an open source, very generous company, their bangs were all public information, admittedly in a weird format, but it was publicly accessible information. So I could use the open source info they provided, the packages like Vite and the bundlers and the tools there to make it easier to build. I could use AI to help me generate and smooth out some of the code. I hate writing regex. So I spent a lot of time with AI and a couple regex debuggers to make sure this would work as effectively as possible. And the result after all of this is code that works really, really well. I built this whole thing in an hour. It's probably gonna take more time to edit the video, put together the thumbnail and title, brand it, package it, and release it than it took me to build this in the first place. And I'm not saying that as a flex, like I'm some kind of God. I'm certainly not bad. This was a nice reminder that I'm good at writing code. But more importantly, the tools I'm using make it really easy for anyone to build something like this relatively quickly. And I love that. I love the fact that when I have an issue with a piece of software, I'm no longer stuck waiting for the company that built it to fix it or sitting there dealing with the frustration of the thing not working how I want it to. I can just go build my own alternative now that's better. That's kind of what we do with T3 chat. Admittedly, much harder product to build. But I haven't even showed you guys my favorite feature. And I'll admit, I didn't think I would use this that much when I set it up. And I was entirely wrong. Who are the best software dev YouTubers to watch as an experienced engineer exclamation point t3 instantly spins up a chat on t3 chat i have been using this so much more than i ever ever would have guessed sadly i didn't rig the response as you guys can tell here there's a handful of people i would not have recommended in the list like tech lead <laughs> bob martin but the fact that I could search things like that to AI directly has actually been really, really nice. I found myself defaulting to searching my own AI chat app instead of doing traditional web search. And it's changed the way I do search. It's changed the way I've written the queries and the things that I want to go look for. And if I look through the things I searched here, this one definitely did that through uh, exclamation point T3 bang. This one I did, I was about to Google search bash command to make an SH file, SH file runnable because I'm so tired of remembering the ch mod, CHO and all that bullshit. I was about to hit enter and real quick exclamation point T3 enter. Now I got here, one click copy, go back to my terminal, one click paste and I'm back to work. I have been very surprised or here's one, update all files in directory to be prettier formatted correctly. I knew it was dash dash right. I didn't know what came after if there was other things and I just couldn't remember. I normally have this already built as a script. Just wanted to quickly double check. The ability to do quick searches like that or here, what happened to the chat message there? Might have my setup in a slightly corrupted state because I'm debugging on my own account all the time. My, my chat history is a fucking mess from all the weird things I do. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is I've been really surprised at how often I'm using my search engine to search my chat app. And it's kind of rewired my brain. I'm sure some amount of this is biased because I built the things and it's pretty cool using the search engine I made to search the chat app I made in a browser that I've been bullying to go in the direction I want it to. But on the other hand, it's actually been really useful. And I am amazed at how often I'm defaulting to it. I don't think I would if it wasn't so fast, not just like we built a fast chat app that's local first and everything, but Gemini as the default works really well because it flies. The point I'm trying to make here is I underestimated AI chats as a default search engine. And now that I'm using it more, I'm actually quite enjoying it. That all said, wasn't what I built this for. I just wanted to unduck my DuckDuckGo bangs. And now that I've succeeded with that, who knows where it'll go. If you wanna add it to your browser, it's relatively simple. Go to your search settings, relatively similar in most browsers. Add a custom search engine, unduck. And as you saw here, there's a little click to copy. Paste that. And now you've added your new search engine. That easy. I am so happy with the experience I have had with this. I added it to all my browsers. I can't add it to my iPhone though, because they hard code the search engines. <sighs> Apple. Yeah. That's all I got on this one though. Crazy as it sounds, I built the search engine in a few dozen lines of code and it has become my default and I'm very happy with it. If you want to use bangs, I'd recommend giving it a shot. 
Let me know what you guys think. And if you couldn't have guessed already, fully open source, already starting to get PRs. I'm sure it's going to be a lot more chaotic once this video drops. MIT licensed, because I don't care. If you want to go fork this and build your own thing, go nuts. I don't plan on putting a lot of work into this project. I wanted to solve my one problem. I solved my one problem. If you want to solve other problems, awesome. I did do one that was really helpful. Uh, somebody pointed out if you do GHR, it lets you hot link to a GitHub repo, but it would parse the slashes incorrectly. So I added custom handling for that. So if I want to go to like, I don't know, uh, ping.gg slash upload thing, it will open straight to GitHub to that repo, which is really nice. Yeah. Could see myself adding custom bangs, probably through local storage. Haven't done it yet. Something I actually did really want to do is log all your searches locally in IndexedDB so that you can look at them and have like a page showing it all. Yeah, there's a lot of places this can go. I'm planning on taking it none of them. I'm expecting just knowing how these videos tend to go for three to four forks to immediately pop up or things similar to it, most of which will probably go further and be even better than what I built. And that's an awesome thing. I don't want to be the exclusive provider of DuckDuckGo's bangs. <laughs> I'm not even the exclusive provider. I sold them from DuckDuckGo. I just wanted to solve my problem. And if this solves problems for you, awesome. If it doesn't, fine too. And if you have different problems that this shows you that you can go solve, do it. I would be honored. I would be pumped if someone cloned Unduck and made something way bigger and more successful with it. That would be awesome. Just make sure it resolves locally, please. I don't want to have to do a hop across the network. I don't want to have to wait on someone else's shitty DNS just to go Google search another platform. I don't need that. Please make sure it runs fast. And honestly, if DuckDuckGo gets their shit together, I might just move back there anyways. But for now, I built the best search engine in the world for me. Probably won't be the best for everyone. But if it is for you, awesome. And if it isn't, you now have all the things you need to go make your own. That's all I got on this one. Let me know what you think. Is my search engine a meme or is it actually useful? I think the future of more personal software like this is really, really bright. And I would recommend you try building things like this yourself. And until next time, keep subbing to T3Chat.